between workers also falling oh you're thinking that's okay <coughs> all those poor uneducated menial workers having to grub in the dust before the robots replace them are you so sure oh, don't look at me don't look at me I suspect most of you are or are about to be well con you consider yourself educated or about to be educated I think you're sitting here thinking this society is about to certify you educated now we are, by the way, we like certifying you educated because we can get you to pay for the certification, which suits the universities of the industrial world very well. Well, have you noticed? And I do not care which university you come from. Have you noticed the classes have never been bigger? Have you noticed that we admit more students than we did the year before, right? As are happening in universities around the world, See, ah, now they don't look so happy. Now, hmm. So how many university students, post-secondary university students, are enrolled at the world right now? Approximately 100 million. Those are students enrolled. That's not the number of people with degrees. That's just the students enrolled. And every single one of them, every single one of them, they're all your competitors. That's the reality. You see, in the olden days, which were sold like 15 minutes ago, which is what some of you are still doing, in the olden days, you see, all you needed was a degree, because they were rare, because they were exceptional. I graduate, people chased me down the street offering multiple jobs, because I, I had a degree and I was a warm body. Days, long gone. So. I'm sure you understand demand and supply. Big supply, demand. What if the supply of degree holders was growing faster than the demand for degree holders? Wouldn't that be awkward <laughs> with your strategy about to get a degree? See, in the olden days it worked. In the olden days, if this was maybe even 1980, I could say, Good guys, congratulations, get your degree, you got a job, you'll have a decent career. I cannot say that today, I cannot. I'm tempted to say it. 
I'd be lying to you. So, may I be truthful? May I just say it honestly? To be a survivor, the firestorm of competition that the global economy is bringing. You ready? A degree is not enough. Okay, it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. Ah, and there's someone in the room. I can hear that. I can hear the bad thought. Someone in the room is thinking, yes, I know that. He's all excited telling me something I already know. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have two degrees. <laughs> so there. <laughs> that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful if nobody else thought of that strategy but you. I'll double up on degrees. Every university in the major industrial world has as one of its strategic goals to increase the number of graduate students. It's in our interest to keep you here for quite a while. Maybe you should get three degrees. Some of you are so sure. One degree, get two degrees, get one professional designation. My resume will glow with it. Two degrees, one prof maybe two degrees, two professional designations. If only other people weren't thinking the same thing. Why do you think that that thought is like unique? It isn't. Competitive <laughs> pressures rise. Persons your age all around the world are thinking, aha, I will get better educated and better educated. I will fill more and more stuff into my head until it, until it, until what? Until what, ladies and gentlemen, until what? You see? There is something about this, make myself better educated, which has a small problem to it if everyone else is doing the same thing, and they are. Then where does that leave you? And we're only starting. That's today's pressure from the global economy. That's the number of students enrolled today. Right? But do you actually think competitive pressure is going to weaken? What's going to cause competitive pressures to weaken? Oh, I know. China is, has actually ordered all of its universities to shut down for five years. You know, to give time for the oversupply of graduates to. Maybe not. Oh, oh, someone was looking at me. Yeah, that would be a good idea if they did. No, they're not. Look, really and truly, what a bad thought. You have your degree now. You don't care if anyone else on the planet gets a degree. Not very sensible. No. No, the Chinese government is not in the slightest intention of reducing its university system, nor is India, nor is Russia, nor are the European systems. Yes, the University of California system is reducing enrollment because the United States is now ungovernable. So for the moment, they're just offline. Notice a couple of things. You have more competitors than you ever had in the past, and tomorrow there will be more. And when you're 30, there will be even more. And that's just going to continue into your indefinite future. I bet some of you are taking quantitative courses. Betcha, betcha. Math is wonderful, isn't it? Math is programmable by its very nature. Math, right? Symbolic logic? Deductive? Yes, no? Just what a computer can do best. I'm a mathy. I am destined for obsolescence first before anyone else. <laughs> well, think about it, but you do these things without thinking about it. So, I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, what's the plan? What's the plan to deal with this? I do not believe I've told you a single thing you don't half know. But I think, like many persons facing a high challenge, you take this, these issues and push them into the back of your head. Got an exam next week, got an assignment next week, got, a, got lots of stuff to do. Can I think about the fact that I'm engaged in a suicidal career move? <laughs> but somewhere you have to stop and think, how will I escape this? I am obsessively interested in career, and courtesy of a number of wonderful information technology tools, I basically watch my students and my graduates. And I watch them. And it is a little alarming. Because they would tell you it's harder to get promoted than to get hired. And I watch them. <coughs> they get hired. And they're so happy. And then, and then reality sets in. 
in a wildly competitive economy where they know that they can be replaced. So what is their response? What is the response of the industrial world to rising competitive pressures? What is it? It is, of course, to, and some of you already work as co-ops or interns, you know this, work ever longer hours. Some of you take pride in your work ethic. I salute you, good thing you have one, because otherwise you're just toast. And some of you think, aha, my work ethic's getting me my degree, my work ethic will get me my job, my work ethic will, will, will what? Nobody else is going to be working? Yes, they are. And so, if you thought all this work was to get you the job and get in the door, then you get hired. Someone does actually hire you. And then expects you to work 12 hours a day. And you even can say to yourself, oh, yeah, well, you know, I'm young, 12 hours a day, start out, make my reputation, and then, and then I will work less hours. Really? 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 Then why are, your, why are your bosses working as long as you're working? Why do some of you come into the workplace as students and see that your boss is already there? And you think, oh God, I should have come in earlier. And now it's seven o'clock at the night, and night, and you really, really want to get out of there. And your boss is still sitting there. Or as one of my former students said, I wanted to join this industry. I was so happy I got my co-op job. I was delirious. It was the most wonderful thing I could possibly imagine. There I am. And I worked my tail off. And, and, and the, the boss is only in his early 30s. And he's like a mentor to me, which is invaluable to you. So this is like everything is unfolding so wonderfully. His dreams are coming true. And it's like the ideal co-op placement. And he works hard to justify the, the mentor's confidence in him. But then he starts noticing a few things. Because he thinks, OK, then I want the mentor job. I want to jump like the mentor. I want to move into the organization. And then he noticed that horrible thing. His mentor was always at work before he was. His mentor always left after he left. And he had this horrible thought. Oh, and that's who I want to be. I want to work unceasingly for the rest of my life. Oh, and then he discovered another little detail which turned him off of this particular career path. The guy was 30, the just early 30s rather. And he already been divorced. I was working on wife number two. Young co -op thought there might be some cause and effect between the long work hours and one failed marriage before you were much past 30. So, how are you going to avoid this trap? The world will say, if you don't want to work, shove off, we'll replace you. You know, they don't even have to say it, because you know it's true. Because I'll find another degree holder who will say, yes, yes, I'll work 13 hours a day. Oh, OK, you bid 14 hours, right? You bid 16 hours, OK? You bid 18 hours. You bid 19 hours, the next person's going to try to bid, but can't because he knows he will be dead if he, <laughs> reduces his, he increases his workload anymore. Sorry, you have to sleep. I mean, you will lose your mind first before you even die, but like, it, 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 it strikes me as like rather preposterous that you would wish to do this. Totally preposterous that you would wish to do this. So now, competitive prices <coughs> rise, they get higher, your degree is not enough. Your work ethic is a seductive mistress that will just chew up your life and spit. Oh, you're looking all depressed now. I'm not gonna lie to you, ladies and gentlemen. What a liar, you should invite in someone else. But now, of course, I presume you're waiting for me to tell you how to avoid this. Oh my, well, don't, oh yes, okay, now they've all given up. Yes, well, that's going to make things better. There's a way around this difficulty, don't you suppose there is? Don't you suppose there is? But of course, if you don't know there's a difficulty, then you're not preparing to get around it. You know, firestorms of competition. Who survives, who does not? We know who's not going to survive. The educated commodities with high work ethics who walk in straight lines or off of cliffs. In other words, traditional careers pursued in traditional ways as if this were 19, 
1980. We got him, and it didn't even work in 1990. Like we're that far behind the times. <coughs> so then, what's the response? What do you need to do that you can start at immediately? This afternoon, indeed. See, I would like to think, I really would like to think, that you were that you have these answers already now in the front of your head. Okay, okay, you know, this is spooky stuff, so I must focus on these things I knew I had to do. So I would like to think that was the case. So let's enumerate basic things you have to do to survive and to thrive. Because I watch my former students pull off this strategy. And they end up having secure jobs, high incomes, and they don't work killer hours. It's working the killer hours, which is your biggest challenge. With your educations, you will get some jobs. With your educations, you can get some money. Except, just don't ever calculate income per hour work, because then that will depress you. So how do they manage excellent jobs? that's secure. And why are they secure? Because our employer is afraid to lose them. Don't you want to be the worker? Don't you want a career in which your employer is afraid you will leave and has to talk very softly to you? You know, I'd like you to work, oh, could you work on this file this weekend? Please, 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 please. But not next weekend, just this weekend. This is kind of a little emergency, please, please. It, okay, we'll send a limo to pick you up at your home, and there'll be a full catered meal just this Saturday. Not next Saturday, just this Saturday, please, please. Don't you want that? Or do you think that's unrealistic? <coughs> or do you think what you have to do when the boss says, I need you Saturday, yes sir, ma'am. <laughs> How high do you want me to jump? Not a very good strategy. So what would you do? I'm actually giving you time to think about what you would do, because I would like you to have it come to the front of your head, but I will blurt it out in a moment. Well, you have to make yourself a star, don't you? You have to make yourself distinctive. In a way your degree does not. In a way your experience does not. In a way your work, work ethic does not. So how do you make yourself a star? You're torturing me. I will, if you keep doing this, I will just not stop. I will stay here all afternoon shouting at you, being this prophet of doom. How do you be a star? Okay, I'll phrase it more professionally then if you don't like star word, the word star is scaring you. Okay, how do you create such a distinctive set of skills that you are not in competition with this mob of other degree holders? Is that not the question? It's a demand supply thing. What can you do that the people cannot? It's as simple as that. What can you do that the people cannot that your employer will value very highly or that the marketplace will value very highly? What is it? What is it that you can do? And don't look like it. You don't look at me like there's nothing you can imagine you can do then. Your job is to find it. What's your role in a university? What's your role in every single course? Not to master the course, but to find where in the course you can create your edge that your classmates are not. Where is there a piece of information your classmates don't appreciate? Where is an extra skill you can develop? <coughs> Here's a hint. You know those reading lists your professors give you and those god awful heavy textbooks? You know how you made it distinctive compared to other degree holders? It's radical. Read stuff that has not been assigned to you. And I have to wonder how many have, have, have actually occurred that to you. Ooh, read something else. Yes, read something else. First, because you know your professor assigns you some stuff you can ignore. <coughs> Do that carefully, by the way. Don't get it wrong, otherwise a bad mark consequence occurs. You seriously don't think we wanted you to read all of chapter 32. We wanted you to find the key parts of chapter 32 and then, you know, whatever you can do with the rest of it, who knows. And then that time you save to read something your classmates are not reading. Does that make sense? That takes a little more time now because you're 
try to free up time in the future. You invest now in creating a highly distinctive skill. How do you do it? You read stuff your classmates aren't doing. You talk to professors about things that are not assignment due on Tuesday. You try to wheel out of the professor information that they only give to you and not your other classmates, because your other classmates were too stupid to ask for this piece of information. That's making your professors really, really work. My colleagues are all not happy that if I necessarily tell you that, because they think they are overworked, but they have jobs and you do not. And their jobs is to help you get a job. So make them do their work. Stand there in their office. You know what really works best? Lean back into the chair, waiting for the answer. You know, signal with your body language, you ain't moving until you get an answer. Yes, that's serious. And engage your faculty members in dialogue. Read beyond what you have to do. And to what purpose are you doing? Always to find a skill, a distinction. A lot of people do not have something they know. But you show you know that they do not. Former students of mine run consulting practices. And the sole thing they do is give information from Statistics Canada to major corporations that, that uh, major corporations have not noticed. It's very hard. The data from StatCan is free. They just troll through those billions of pieces of information and say to clients, do you realize your market is sinking? No, it isn't. It's rising. Yo, you misdefined your market. Let me show you. Look, dropping like a stone. Ooh, my goodness. Can you give me more details? Certainly can. StatCan's, oh, I can get more of it. No, you don't use the word StatCan. You say, I can get more of it. <laughs> and then you charge them $500 an hour. For those of you who already have employment of one kind or another, co-op, internships, summer jobs, you're already doing that, right? Feeding extra piece of information to your boss that you think he doesn't know that would be useful, right? Right? Yes, see, but it's a no-brainer. You want to impress the boss by doing your work well. Yes, everyone's doing their work well, largely speaking. And if they don't, they'll be fired and replaced by somebody else who does their work well. You want to be the person of distinction. You want to be kicking ass. You want to be the star. So we always have extra information. <gasps> Maybe you're the guy who always asks the weirdo question, the question no one else has thought to ask. And he knows it's not a weirdo question because he's mined the internet to find killer questions that are not being answered. It's really hard to do that, by the way. You have to ask Mother Google, what are people not asking about? But if you do it carefully, Mother Google will actually tell you that. <laughs> they will, by the way. That means using Google creatively. That means using information tools creatively. This means becoming a person who always has extra information that others do not, extra questions that others do not. And then finally, if you wish to be a superstar, a suggestion that is not in the textbooks, a suggestion that is not part of conventional wisdom. Remember, that's what we do at a university, right? We teach you conventional wisdom. Yes, we do. What, are we gonna, what else could we teach you but the received wisdom of how to do things in all our domains? Trouble is, we're doing that to too many people. So then now, that marketplace that really does not care if you are being inconvenienced. What the marketplace wants from you are new ideas, not conventional wisdom. So you want to be a star? The path is clear. The market wants something special from you, or they will work you like a dog. Simple as that. Special information, especially insightful questions, new solutions. Root logic, ladies and gentlemen. Root logic tells you how you will be, how you will survive and thrive. And I've watched hundreds of students implement this strategy to the most extraordinary effect. Incomes touching a million dollars a year. Their employers who treat them with kid gloves so that they do not leave. And they work less than 40 hours a week because they don't wish to and don't have to. No one messes with them.
Is that not your vision? Or are you not ambitious? I wish to be a worker bee. Doesn't it actually sound ambitious to me? 